Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 21, and then we'll read verse 24 through 25. This is what it says in the New Living Translation. Verse 18, this is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph son of David. The angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son. And you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Verse 24, when Joseph woke up, somebody said when Joseph woke up. He did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. For the few moments that we have together on this last Sunday of the year, I want to preach about how to handle a miracle. I want to preach about how to handle a miracle. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. This, morning, this morning, we're going to talk about how to handle a miracle. Come on, put your hands together if you believe the Lord is going to bless you this morning. How to handle a miracle. How to handle a miracle. It's so good to see you, Sister Deshaun. Um, First, let me say this before I dive in. Me and Lady C thought last night um, that Baby D was on his way. And y'all, let me tell y'all, I failed miserably. We, we called the doctor and her blood pressure had never been high before during her whole pregnancy. I said, well, if you check again in 10 minutes, uh, <laughs> And it's still high, we want you to come on in. You might have to, you know, induce her and all that. So I text Elder Harris and say, hey man, just be prepared to preach tomorrow because I might not be able to make it. We got to go to the hospital. So y'all, uh, <laughs> we running out, you know, some so running all over the house, trying to pack a bag. And, Well, and it's already packed, let, let, let me say that, it's already packed. But she's running all over the house, getting her last few little things, and looking for a folder. And y'all sat on the couch and just started crying. Because <laughs> I couldn't believe it, I'm like, oh God, I'm about to be a daddy. <laughs> and she was like, about to? You're already a daddy. <laughs> So I just wanted you guys to know, she has not had the baby yet. And uh, when we got to the hospital, um, her blood pressure went back down and was regulated and she's fine. So I think now we're in the process of going to the hospital and getting sent home. I think that's the, 
That's the process we're in now. So uh, I will continue to keep you all updated. Y'all pray for me and y'all pray for her. And uh, yesterday we was just, last night we was looking at each other like, I don't know yet. I, we was like, we just need a couple more days. Because we, you know, was, but everything is set up. His room is ready. We got, we got two car seats. We got two strollers. We, we ready to go. So we gonna, we ready to be parents of the year. Amen. So this morning I want to talk about how to handle a miracle. Us talking about how to handle a miracle means that in some way, some form, in some time in your life, you've mishandled a miracle. Yeah. Come on, man. I'll be the first to Come testify. On, yeah. Wish I had about five others that are be honest with me to say, Pastor, I done mishandled some things that that didn't come my way. Can I run the road for a few moments and see if I'm talking to anybody since nobody won't say amen? Since I wasn't here last week, I gotta I guess I gotta preach like I, I you know, I'm I'm candidating again, so <laughs> you you you've mishandled some things. Mishandled some relationships. You know what I'm talking about. You said you were going to be faithful. You said you were going to be committed. You said you was going to do the right thing. Before you know it, you dropped the ball. <laughs> Mishandle the blessing yeah, yeah. that you have. Yeah. Whether it was in a intimate relationship, you might have mishandled friends and family members. Let's be honest, you, you got a few family members you said you was going to pay them back and, and you still owe them some money. I remember my grandmother, she had a little black book and she would record our names in the book. This book was almost as equal to the Lamb's Book of Life. She would record our names in this book and the amount of money we owed her in this book. And uh, every single week, she would give everybody a call and update them on the, on the money that was owed to her. And y'all, I want y'all to know, I and my mother's here to testify, I cleared my balance with my grandmother before she checked up out of here, amen. But I know some people here today, you have mishandled family and friends who have been generous to you. Loaned you a couple of dollars and you didn't give it back to them. Mishandled. You might have mishandled relationships. You might have mishandled family and friends. Uh, and this is one that we really don't want to talk about. All of us at some point in our life have mishandled some money. Uh, I knew I wouldn't get a bunch of amens in here, but I came to preach anyway. You, Yeah, yeah, you mishandled some money. That check you said you was going to put away. You found yourself at bingo. You, you found yourself at the casino in Louisville. You, you found yourself pulling the tickets at the gas station. You, you found yourself shopping at Amazon. You, you found yourself at Kohl's. You, you found yourself at Walmart. And you, you, you found yourself somewhere that you didn't need to be. Oh, okay, no, did nobody want to say it? You found yourself at the liquor store. You, you, you found yourself with the weed man. You, you found, you, you, okay, did nobody want to say it? But you, you found yourself mishandling some things. I came here this morning to tell us that in this next season of our life, we got to be careful. How we handle what God puts in our hands. New Mount Zion, I want you to understand on this last Sunday of 2022 that we will never see a year like this before. We will never experience a year like this before. And I came to encourage you all today to let you know on this Christmas Sunday morning that the Lord says that he has a miracle in store for you. He has 
something lined up in store for you. But baby, I got to part here parenthetically and share with you that God says that he don't want you to mishandle your miracle. I believe that this text here in Matthew chapter 1 is tailored to teach us how to handle a miracle. Let us look at it. The text opens up Matthew chapter 1 recording the genealogy of Jesus. This text talks about how Jesus is in the lineage of the Son of David. You all understand that Jesus is in the lineage of the son of David, not by human conception, uh, uh, but it is by uh, the spirit's interruption, by, by, by the spirit impregnating Mary and Mary being engaged to Joseph. And, and you all know that it is Joseph who is in the lineage of the son of David and this text helps us to see that while all this is going on, Joseph and Mary, they done decided that they want to get married. They done decided that they want to go ahead and hook up. They done decided that they want to go ahead and they want to go ahead and make this thing official. And y'all, before they could say the I do's, before they could jump over the broom, before they could go on the honeymoon, Mary comes to Joseph and says, Joseph, I got something I want to tell you. So Joseph, I, I want you to sit down because what I'm getting ready to tell you it ain't going to make no sense, but I got something I want to tell you. And she says, Joseph, I'm pregnant. Joseph said, I don't know how you pregnant. We ain't done nothing. We ain't, we ain't been nowhere. We ain't been alone. We ain't done anything. I don't understand how you pregnant. Joseph, as he is hearing this news, church, Joseph is considering divorcing Mary because what has transpired in his life. And beloved, can I share with you uh, that, that if you're going to handle a miracle properly, the first thing that you need to do is that you need to be aware that your faith is going to be challenged. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the text. You, you need to be aware that your faith is going to be challenged. Look at verse number 18 and 19. It says, this is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. Y'all, y'all, what we have to understand is that we got to be aware that your faith is going to be challenged. Joseph, here in this text, he had a uh, gap some news that his soon-to-be wife was pregnant, but his soon-to-be wife that was pregnant was not pregnant by him. And I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but have you ever been in a situation where life was going good, where everything that you could have asked for was going the way that you had planned it to go? Every, everything that you had put to on paper, it was actually coming to pass. It, it was actually Actually coming together. You were excited about the future. You were excited about what was getting ready to transpire. But all of a sudden, you got some news that just threw you off. You got some news that just made you feel some kind of way. You got some news that threw you off of your off of your focus. And Joseph, beloved, here in the text, he shows us how to handle our miracles. When, watch this, it don't look like a miracle. And I want to preach to somebody this morning who is facing a trial or a tribulation that does not look good, that does not look favorable, that does not look like you're going to win in it. I want to come and encourage you this morning to not Focus on what it looks like, but you need to focus on who your God is. I know I'm preaching here this morning. You, yeah, it don't look good. It don't feel good. Yeah, it, it might not be good, but you need to have 
faith in the God who is over your life. And we serve a God who can take a bad situation and who can make it good. And y'all, what you got to understand is, is that Joseph clearly did not understand what was in Mary. He did not understand what, what, what Mary was carrying. He did not understand what Mary had going on on the inside. Because if he understood what she had going on on the inside, then he would not have been willing to divorce her. And can I park here parenthetically and ask you, how many times have you been willing to turn your back on something that you just did not understand? It was not because God didn't say it. It was not because, or I wish I would say amen in here, it was not because God wasn't working through it. It was not because God did not have his hand on it, but it did not look normal to you. And I'm preaching to some people in this house this morning to expand your faith that God says in this next season, I'm going to do some things that are not going to make sense to you. I'm, I'm going to move in ways that are not going to make sense to you. It did not make sense, y'all, that Mary could get pregnant and ain't no man touch her. It, it did not make sense, y'all, that the Holy Spirit could just shadow over her and then she could have a baby. That don't make any sense. That's not logical. But can I tell you, we serve a God that don't make any sense. We, we serve a God that's not logical. We serve a God that don't do things the way we do it. And I'm preaching to somebody today. You're waiting on God to heal you like he healed you the last time. But you got cancer all through your body. You're, you're waiting for God to give you peace like you had peace the last time. But you got hell all in your home. But I serve a God that can take the cancer that is in your body. I serve a God that can take the hell that is in your home. I serve a God that can take the pressure that is on your life and turn it around for your good. And we know that all things work together for the good of them who love God and who are called according to. Is there anybody here this morning that can say it don't look good, it don't feel good, but I know he's working it together for my good. got to be aware Amen. that your faith yes, God. is going yes, God. to be challenged. Yes, yes, yes. Some of us, we, we don't want our faith to be challenged. Mm, mm, mm. So we put limits on God. Yes, But can I tell you that if Jesus was not born through the virgin woman, that he would not have been fit or capable to die for your sins? Come on now. Come on now. Oh, God. Come on now. You yeah. need him to die for you. But the only way that he dies for you is that his birth is once just an inconvenience to you. Yeah. I'm not saying amen in here, and I'm preaching. Come on now. The only way that God is going to make this thing happen for you is by inconveniencing you. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know, is there anybody in here this morning that is going to mature to a place that you're saying, Lord, I'm willing to be inconvenienced in my life if it is that you're going to do something greater than where I am now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we don't like to talk about being inconvenienced because it causes us, watch this, and I've been saying it for the last few months to change our perspective. Joseph, he... Text says he was a righteous man. Joseph wasn't a bad guy. We know he wasn't a bad guy because the text says that he was not going to divorce her publicly. He wasn't, he wasn't going to do her like that. He was going to put her away privately. He, he was a good man, which lets me know that sometimes 
Uh, bad things can happen to good people. Sometimes bad things can, can happen to God's people. But beloved, is it really bad though? It cannot be that bad if what is inside Mary is Jesus. Come on now. Oh, you, better, you better say that. What if every circumstance you are facing, you viewed it as Jesus being in the midst of it? Yes, sir. Would you really see it as being that bad? Come on now. Would you really see it as being that hard? Would you really see it as being that difficult if you viewed the situation as Jesus being inside of it? Can I go ahead and share with you that the almighty God, y'all, he came down through 40 and two generations. He put himself, watch this, in a little virgin woman, y'all, and made himself a baby, y'all. He was birthed through the birth canal, y'all, and y'all, he grew up as a child and became a man. Then he died. And y'all, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that we serve a God, y'all, who does things that, that is through process and procedure. We, we serve a God, y'all, who does things, y'all, that sometimes takes a process, that sometimes takes time, but it's okay because if a big God can make himself little just to die for you and so that we don't have an excuse not to believe him, why would you not serve him? Come on now. All right. Y'all ready to get home to y'all chicken? It's okay. I came to preach this morning, but it's all right. Uh, Man. Be aware that your faith is going to be challenged. But secondly, you're going to know how to handle a miracle. <laughs> you need to be prepared to take on unexpected responsibilities. You're going to handle a miracle. You've got to be prepared to take on unexpected responsibilities. Look at verse number 20. The text says, as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 21, and she will have a son, <laughs> yes. and you are to name him yeah. Jesus. Yeah. 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 <laughs> For he will save his people from their sins. If you read it in the King James Version, I, I, I like NLT, but, but I, sometimes I got to go back to the King James because I, I like how King James uh, 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 writes it. Look at verse 21 in the King KJV. It says, and she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Yeah, 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 yeah. What we find out in verse 20 and 21 is that in verse 20, we find out why Joseph wanted to divorce Mary. It's right here in the text. It says he wanted to divorce her because the angel said, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife uh -huh. because of the child that's in her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of us are afraid Come on, man. Come on. to take on this next level yes, sir. of miracle yes, sir. because of the responsibility that comes with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And, and, and if God is presenting, oh God, thank you, Holy Ghost. If He is presenting a next level miracle to you, yeah, yeah, yeah. then that means He's trying to grow you. Yeah, yeah. Oh God. Come on, preach, uh, man. God, why are you presenting this responsibility now in my life? 
now that I got things going on, now that things are, it seems like things are on the right track, it seems like things are together, it seems like we got everything going the way that we need to go. Now we got to do this, now we got to take on a responsibility, now we got to go in this direction, now we got to, God says this is the perfect time for you to take on the new responsibility. Who am I preaching you to this morning that needs to hear that God is calling you out of your space of comfortability into a space of responsibility. God says, I want you to be responsible for this miracle. I want you to watch over this miracle. Uh, I know I'm in the Bible because when the Lord made Adam, he says, listen, he says, you are going to be the ruler of over everything over the earth. He says, Adam, I want you to name all the all the animals. I, I want you to name all the fruit. I, I want you to tend to this garden. The Lord made him responsible over what he created. And y'all, that is a big task to be responsible of the Savior of the world. And I want to know, is there anybody in here today have you been responsible of the Savior that's living on the inside of you? Have you been loving the people like you should? Have you been doing people the right way like you should? Have, have, have you been walking? Like, have you been taking care of your responsibility? What's on the inside? Y'all not saying amen, but I'm going to keep preaching anyway. Uh, he said, don't, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because she got a child <laughs> that ain't yours. He says, he says this, this child in which she is carrying, Joseph, is bigger than you. But I, I believe in you so much that I want to make you responsible for how does he make you responsible for He says, Joseph, you will name him Jesus. Okay. Y'all not getting this. He says, Joseph, you will name him Jesus. The one who's going to die on the cross, you are going to give him his name. The one who is going to bear your sins and burdens, you are going to give him his name. The one who is going to die for you, he says, I'm giving you the responsibility of giving him his name. And y'all, can I encourage somebody that God is trying to trust you with a new level of response? Will y'all pay attention to me this morning? God is trying to trust you with a new level of responsibility. He's trying to trust you with a new level of a miracle. And y'all, if you you mishandled this miracle. Oh God, what if Joseph would have mishandled this miracle? Then we would not be here today. That's how important it is for you to handle this miracle properly. Now, free scrubs, I'm doing the best I can. You need to handle the miracle that God is placing in your life right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you don't understand the magnitude yes, God. Yes, God. of the miracle. He, you're going to handle this miracle. I'm done, y'all. Be aware that your faith is going to be challenged. Uh, be prepared to take on unexpected responsibilities. Uh, you didn't expect this to come. The last thing. You got to be patient while God is working. I'll say it again. You got to be patient while God is working. As you are nudging the person that's sleeping next to you, tell them you got to be patient while God is working. Well, Pastor Scruggs, where do you find that out in the text? I'm glad you asked. This in verse 24, 25. Read the text. It says, when Joseph woke up. And some of y'all, y'all been sleeping too long. And it's time for you to wake. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up, wake up, wake up. Come on, come on, touch your neighbor and say, wake up, wake up. Come on, no, tell them, wake up. Wake, wake up. 
The Bible says when, when Joseph woke up, he didn't do what he wanted to do. He didn't do what was comfortable for him to do. He didn't do uh, what, was, what was of the norm. The Bible says when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. That's right. That's right. Verse 25. <laughs> but he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. Yeah. 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 I'm done when I say this. If you're going to handle this miracle properly, you have to be patient while God is working. Watch the text. The text says uh, that Mary is carrying this baby still. That even though it's uncomfortable for Joseph, God does not remove the uncomfortability. He still has to deal with it. Huh. See, some of us, we've been praying for God to remove the uncomfortability. But God ain't sending it nowhere. You're going to have to deal with it. He, he says, he says uh, 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 instead of me trying to get relief or trying to get joy yeah, yeah. for being married. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had some grown folks in here. Joseph said, he says, I'm going to stop and I ain't going to touch her until the baby is born. Y'all ain't hearing me. I said, you need to be patient while God is working. That while Mary is carrying this baby, Joseph does not have relations with her. He, he understands that what is going on inside of Mary requires me to be patient. And, oh God, what is developing in her requires me to be patient, requires me to put my emotions on the back burner. I wish I had some strong men in here. Re requires me to have to, to turn my head. Re requires me to have to turn around in the bed. He, he says, if, if, if I'm going to handle this miracle properly, he says, I got to be patient. And is there anybody here in this house this morning that you're going to commit to not getting ahead of God, not getting behind God, not not being on, on, on the back of God and the front of God, but you're going to walk step in step with God. And, and beloved, you need to be patient while God is working because what you can't see is that what God is developing in Mary is going to save the entire world. What, what God is developing in Mary is the blood that you see running warm in your veins. What God is developing in Mary is the very thing that is going to change the, the, the destiny of the entire world. And it requires you to be patient. And y'all, I'm so glad that Joseph was patient. I'm so glad that Joseph did not get in himself because y'all, legally, Joseph could have slept with his wife. Legally, Joseph could have had relations with his wife. But Joseph shows us restraint with the miracle. And some of us, God wants you to show some restraint this next time. The next time he blesses you, you need to show some patience. You need to show some resistance. You just need to show some restraint. The next time you put some money in your hand, don't go and spit it all when you get it. You need to show some restraint. The next time God puts a new man in your life, no, don't be my nagging and mean to him. You need to be nice and lovely. You need to show some restraint. The next time God puts a woman in your life, don't you go to try to sleep with her all quick and fast. Get to know her name. Find out who her family is. Find out who her is find out who baby and all of them is. Get to know her kid's name. The next time God gives you a miracle, you need to do it properly. You gotta 
show. You got to show some patience. I'll leave us with this. I'm believing that in this next season of New Mount Zion's life, God is going to give us a miracle that eyes haven't seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. What God has in store for us. But can I tell you what the miracle in the text is? The miracle in the text is why we come here 52 weeks out of the year. The miracle in the text is Jesus. And whenever you get done with it, Jesus is the reason why we do everything we do. Y'all, we got to handle Jesus properly. We, we, we have to handle Jesus. You don't want to mishandle this next miracle that God has placed in your life. And that's why the songwriter said, I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. I feel the intangible. I see the invisible. I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. Feel the intangible. And I see the invisible. He said, it says, I know that the sky is the limit to what I can have. The sky is the limit to what I can have. Just believe and receive it. God will perform today. Church, if you don't hear nothing else I say, don't mishandle the miracle that God is placing in your life. God is blessing us individually. And he's blessing us collectively. And it's our responsibility what we do with it. Everyone standing.